To start, you'll need to have your QuickBooks company file open. Double click on the Z axis desktop icon and you'll see this connection screen come up. The first time we connect to a QuickBooks company file, you'll see this QuickBooks screen pop up. This is where you provide permission for Z axis to connect to your QuickBooks company file. We recommend you select yes and always and continue. Once you have a successful connection, you'll see the location of the QuickBooks company file you're connected to and the version of QuickBooks that, you, that is currently connected. So once we have successfully connected to QuickBooks, click on the Import tab. Next, you need to select the file that you want to bring into QuickBooks. Now that can be either a spreadsheet or a text file or a QBXML file. For this example, I'm going to select an Excel spreadsheet. So we browse to where that file is located and here we have a folder with a number of sample files that automatically install with Z-axis. So I'm going to select the invoice. Before we start, I'll show you what's contained within that file. So as you'll see here, this is the sample data that I want to bring into QuickBooks. Along the top row, we have what we call a header row. Now this contains the description of what data is contained in each column. Subsequent rows contain the transactional invoice information that we're going to bring into QuickBooks. In this example, we have one invoice of number 1005, which has one row of data, and another invoice 1006, which has two rows of line data to bring into QuickBooks. So we select that this file has a header row, and we select the sheet in the Excel spreadsheet that contains the data. If we were bringing in a text file, we would select the text file delimiter, whether that's a tab, comma, and etc. Next step is to set up a column mapping. For that, we need to map the column in the import file to the corresponding field in QuickBooks. Now we can set up a new mapping for this, and we can save that for use later. So to select a new one, select add new mapping. Select the import type, and we'll go through and map to the QuickBooks field a corresponding column in our import file. So we know the customer reference full name goes to name, invoice reference number goes to our reference number, and so on. You'll see a lot of fields here. They're not all necessary to import data into QuickBooks. In fact, a small minority of them are mandatory. So, for example, you're going to need a customer name, a reference number, an item, and a quantity to successfully bring in an invoice into QuickBooks. So we'll finally map quantity and the rate. You also have the option to set what we call a constant. Now this is a constant value that will apply to all rows within the data we're bringing in. So for example, we decided that we can have a shipping date. Now, all we need to do is write that into that column here, and that shipping date will now apply to all invoices during the import. Finally, I'll click Save, and we can save that mapping that we can use on subsequent imports. By clicking on the preview screen, we can see the data as it's mapped and how it will be brought into QuickBooks. You have the added option of being able to delete rows within this grid here prior to import. Equally, you can edit information if you like. Another two options that you can set is to say if the transaction already exists in QuickBooks, whether Axis should duplicate it, skip it, or overwrite it. Axis should use the next sequential numbering within QuickBooks, or use the imported numbering that comes with the file. You can also set whether to update address and contact details within QuickBooks. So for example, in this file that we're bringing in, we can update the contact address detail for each of those customers, and that will be reflected in the QuickBooks file. Last step in the process is to click on the import button. Axis will validate the file, 
and we'll process each of the rows into QuickBooks. When the import is complete, you'll receive an import summary that will tell you that two records have been added and that there were no errors encountered. If an error does occur, you'll see the reason for the error in the screen below. So now let's go through into QuickBooks and see those two invoices that have been created. So here we have invoice number 1005 and the address details. And the next two is invoice 1006 and there are the two rows corresponding with that. 